practice methods for solving different problems. Uh, integral equations, also you know, binary differential equations and, and partial differential equations and many engineering problems can be solved by these methods. Uh, but here, the main aim of this study is applying, is combining an, another new method to control the accuracy of Adomian composition method and also the HPM. We know that in general form, the researchers, uh, when they want to show the accuracy of their methods, they apply this condition, condition one. Uh, it's traditional absolute error, which depends on the exact solution. Uh, and the right hand side, we, we have epsilon value. But the problem here, because in the real life problems, we, we don't have the exact solution. Also, about the right hand side, about epsilon, we don't know the optimal value. So, for um, the small values of epsilon, for iterative methods, uh, for the small values, we will have many iterations without improving the accuracy. And for large values of epsilon, we will have only one or two or three iterations. Uh, it won't be enough for us because, because uh, the accuracy uh, won't be great for us. Won't be applicable. So instead of this condition, uh, we want to we apply this one, the second one. This condition is based on the stochastic arithmetic. And uh, we apply the CS tech method here to when we want to use this condition. Uh, we can see that this condition, for this condition, we don't need to have the exact solution. Also, on the right hand side, we don't have epsilon, it's at sign zero. It can produce only by the CS tech method in the stochastic arithmetic using the Kedma library. Uh, so, uh, here, instead of the traditional absolute uh, error, we will apply this condition. And, and I described the word as sign Z. Recently, we applied the CS tech method for different topics of uh, numerical analysis, also solving thread form integral equations, and uh, solving FUSI problems, finding optimal regularization parameter for solving first kind integral equations, and also Taylor clarification method for solving load learning problems. Uh, here I want to describe about the CS tech method. Um, if we produce the representable values by computer and collect them in set B, uh, then capital S star member of B can be written in form of equation three. Uh, that here alpha is a mantissa bit of binary floating point arithmetic. Uh, rho is uh, the sign, two to the minus alpha times phi is the missing segment of the mantissa. And capital E is the binary exponent of the result. But if we change the value of alpha from 24 to 53, we can change the precision from single form to double precision. By assuming phi as a casual variable, if you firmly uh, distributed on minus one and one, uh, we can make perturbation on last month is a bit of the smallest star. Uh, if we repeat the process, the, the process of making perturbation, uh, we will have some samples of S star, capital S star. Uh, and we will be able to find the average value, the mean value, and the standard deviation, uh, or mu, mu and mu sigma. Uh, and uh, finally, we can see the equality between mu and the exact smallest star. Using this algorithm, also we can describe the CS tech method. But if we uh, have k samples of uh, capital S star, we would be able to find the average value and the standard deviation. And after that, based on these results, 
we would be able to find the number of common significant digits between the approximate uh, value, between, uh, sorry, the average value and also the uh, approximate value. So uh, here, when we want to apply the stochastic error factor and the CS stack method, uh, finding the number of common significant digits between the values will be important to us. And also in this step five, I uh, described about at sign zero, uh, that it can, can be shown uh, when uh, the average value is equal, equal to zero, or, or when we have uh, this condition, it's the number of common significant digits between the average value and capitalist stock. Uh, we will have at sign zero. Applying the CS stack method, we have, we have some advantages in comparison with the methods based on the floating point earth method. Uh, the first advantage is the accuracy of any numerical result is estimated during the running of a program. But in the floating point earth method, uh, we should wait to to solving, to finishing the process, and after concluding the process, we really can talk about accuracy. But in the CS stack method, uh, each step we can, we can find the uh, accuracy. Using the CS stack method, we can find numerical instabilities. Uh, also, uh, I described about uh, unnecessary iterations that we have in the floating point of method because it depends on the epsilon value on the right-hand side of the traditional absolute error. If we have a small value of epsilon, we will have many iterations. There are unnecessary iterations. Maybe, I don't know, 30 would be 50 iterations. But maybe we don't, we don't need to have uh, these iterations. So using the CS tech method, we can uh, eliminate these unnecessary iterations. Uh, the main novelty of the CS tag method is finding the optimal step of uh, the iteration uh, procedures, and iterative methods, uh, and also finding optimal uh, accuracy, optimal approximate solution, and optimal error. Uh, but in the floating point of method, we, we cannot find this. Uh, Also, in the CS tech method, uh, instead of applying the mathematical software such as Mathematica or Maple, MathLab, and other softwares, we have to apply the Kadma library. The Kadma library uh, should be done on Linux operating system, and also all Kadma code should be written by C, C, uh, Fortran, or ADA codes. We, we can write by these codes. Uh, and um, uh, about the method, the first one is the Atomian decomposition method, and we want to talk here in this study. We want to uh, cover uh, both second kind and first kind linear, nonlinear uh, forms of the problem. We can see the, this, this relation, uh, which is the second kind integral equation with this continuous. Uh, kernel is nonlinear. Uh, that we want to apply the Adomian decomposition method. Uh, we have Lipschitz uh, continuous condition here. Uh, we need this condition because of uh, proving our theorems. Uh, and we know about the Adomian decomposition method that using this uh, relation in equation six, we can uh, find Adomian polynomials. Uh, and after that, we can we can substitute and start a nonlinear term, uh, and also we have uh, this, this source uh, to find the approximate solution. And after the process, we will have this this ratio, ratio not to find the uh, all traits of the Adomian decomposition method. Uh, and if we, if we substitute our iterations here in this solution, we can find the final solution of the Adomian method. Um, we have some theorems to show the uh, uniqueness of solution. 
and also the convergence theorem. Uh, the third one is uh, the theorem of uh, error analysis. Uh, and here we have the main definition of the uh, CS testing method. Based on definition, and after that, applying this definition, we will be able to prove or name uh, CS tag theory. Uh, in this theory, uh, we can find the number of common significant digits for truly numbers R1 and R2. So applying this relation, we can, we can find. We apply this, this definition uh, to prove this theory. Uh, but uh, why should we prove this theory? Because we want to apply uh, or, or new termination criteria, which, is, which depends on uh, two successive approximations, yeah, y n and y n plus one. Uh, if we show that we have equality between the number of common significant digits between two successive equations, and also the number of common significant digits between the exact and approximate solution, we can prove the theorem and we can uh, apply the second termination criteria and CS type method to control the accuracy. Uh, if we prove the theorem, we won't have problem to, to apply the CS type method and also the Kettner library. The second method is the homotopy perturbation method. That first, uh, I want to describe the method, and after that, I describe the both of its application to solve your first kind of uh, the bond equation. Uh, we have operator f here, that f of x equals j of z in this equation. Uh, we can write f of x in form of uh, this relation, l of x plus n of x, that l of x is a linear operator, and n is the remain part of it. So if we, if we uh, substitute equation 12, we can we will have equation 14. After that, based on the traditional homotopy, we will be able to uh, present this distillation, this homotopy operator H, that would be from equation C. Uh, and if we substitute uh, uh, linear uh, and remain part of F in equation 15, we will have this one, this uh, relation. And uh, we can see that if we substitute 0 and 1 instead of uh, A hat here in, in equation 16, starting from the initial PS 6, 0, we can find the uh, solution of the problem. Uh, so if we substitute this power series in both sides of the uh, relation and comparing the same powers of parameter uh, A hat, we will be able to find to find some trade terms, uh, some iterations, and after that substituting all iterations in this relation, in equation 19, we will be able to find the approximate solution. The problem is uh, applying the homotopy perturbation method for solving first kind of integral integral equation with this continuous kernel. Uh, that here, uh, here we can see the nonlinear form of the problem. Here, for, for, for this part, for this part, for nonlinear part, applying uh, transformation, we will be able to change the problem. Uh, to the linear form in form of equation 25. Also, by, uh, if we add some uh, functions here, wt and subtract wt, we uh, will be able to change the problem from the first kind integral equation to the second kind. Because we know, we know that we have a problem uh, solving Linear integral equation. It's not easy. So, uh, so at first we change the linear, the, sorry, the nonlinear uh, first kind integral equation to linear form, and after that we change the problem to the second kind integral equation. 
and apply the and uh, uh, yeah. yeah, in this problem, it's uh, second kind of integral equation. This can use kernel, move and linear. So we we want to apply the homotopy perturbation method for following uh, this problem. Uh, at, at first, we, we, we define the linear and also the remain part of the uh, problem, uh, and we will make our homotopy map, uh, and if we substitute a power series and comparing the uh, same powers of A hat, we will have some iterations here, uh, uh, some iterations here. Uh, and after finding the situations, if we substitute uh, in all uh, series, we can we can find the uh, solution, the proximal solution. And as as I described before, uh, using transformation to change the nonlinear uh, part of the problem to linear form, again we have this one, this condition, and if we apply this condition. We will be able to change change the problem there, yeah? and we can find the uh, problem, uh, the solution of the problem. Uh, again, we have this problem uh, to show the uh, continuity, and also we have the error band, uh, and without definitely without error band, we cannot uh, prove the main theorem of the CS stack method. So, uh, at first, we should prove the error band of the problem. And applying the error band, we will be able again to uh, prove the CS tag main theorem. And here again, we want to show the number of common equality between the number of common significant digits between uh, two successive iterations. And the right hand side, the number of common significant digits. Between the exact and approximate solution. So we have some examples here. That uh, this one is the second kind of integral equation with this continuous kernel. It's linear, uh, and we applied the uh, CS tag method. The first table is based on the floating point arithmetic that we have epsilon here. So we can see that the results. Uh, based on the floating point arithmetic, or based on the first condition, which depends on the traditional absolute error. So here, uh, this results, this error, uh, are obtained based on the um, exact solution and also the proximal solution. And this one, this epsilon value. Uh, and also this table, uh, we have the number of iterations. Completely here, we can see that for small values of, of epsilon, we will have uh, large values of iterations. For example, for epsilon equals 10 to the minus 5, we have, we have only six iterations. For, uh, for example, for large values, we have only one iteration. So, uh, applying the floating point of method uh, here, it would be difficult for us. We, can, we cannot find the optimal results. We cannot find the results uh, with good accuracy, with acceptable accuracy. So we applied the uh, CS tech method. Uh, here, completely, we can see uh, that uh, the stopping condition here is based on two successive iteration. Uh, so the algorithm will be stopped automatically. We don't need to have the epsilon here. The optimal step of iteration seven, this one is the optimal uh, approximation. And also we have optimal error here. This at size zero shows that we have equality between the number of common significant digits between two successive iterations and the uh, number of common significant digits of uh, approximate and exact uh, values. The second example is a Volterra uh, integral equation, nonlinear. Uh, and again, we applied the CS tag method. Uh, but the algorithm 
we stop at six. So it's a uh, optimal step up alteration. We have optimal result and optimal error here. Uh, again, if we if we apply uh, the Adomian decomposition method, for example, uh, for, for this problem, we, we apply the Adomian. Uh, for small layers of epsilon, we will have many iterations. For 10 to the minus 1, we have eight iterations. Yeah. But uh, for large values also, we have only one iteration. But here in the CS tech method, I described that only six iterations would be enough for us. No need to produce um, more uh, iterations. Six would be enough. Why? Because based on our main theory, uh, CS tech theory, uh, it's enough. Uh, and we show that uh, the equality between the number of common significant digits between uh, to conditions, so it would be enough for us. We don't need to make other equations, more equations. For this example, we applied the homotopy perturbation method. It's the nonlinear problem, first kind. Uh, so, as I described before, I changed the problem to a linear and also the second kind integral equation, and I applied the uh, CS tech method. But we can we can see that. Uh, 21 iteration would be enough for us. Um, and next one is again the nonlinear Autoral integral equation, first kind. So we applied the CS tech method and we have this results. So we have uh, optimal iteration is 15, and we have all uh, optimal approximation and optimal error here. Uh, the next one also is the linear, linear problem, uh, and we change the problem to the uh, second kind of integral equation and applying the CS tech method. We have only 11 iterations here. The 11 iterations would be in, and the accuracy is in this form. We can, we can see. Okay, applying, uh, comparing the results, we can see some advantage of the CS tech method. Catmull uh, library and the stochastic arithmetic in comparison with the floating point arithmetic and usual mathematical package. Uh, in the CS tech method, we don't need to have the exact solution to compare the results. The uh, determination criterion is based on two successive iterations. The next advantage is in the CS tech method, we don't need to have epsilon because we know we don't know the optimal value of epsilon, so it's a problem for us. In the CS tech method, we can find optimal iterations, optimal approximations, and optimal error of uh, our method. Also, you know, extra iterations, which uh, we have in the floating point as method. Will be removed using the stochastic arithmetic. And uh, also, uh, we can find some numerical instabilities applying the CS tech method and the Ketman library. Uh, thank you for your uh, attention. And uh, if you have a question, I'm here and uh, you can answer. Okay, thank you for your talk, uh, colleagues. Any other curious questions? Uh, well, I have a question. Uh, do you investigate how the number of iterations is related to rounding errors? Uh, sorry, could you re repeat again your question? Uh, do you investigate uh, how the number of iterations is related to rounding errors? Yeah, yeah. Here, here uh, we talk about the uh, number of common significant digits. And when we want to when we wanna prove our main theory and here, CS tech method, uh, we can we can show equality between the number of common significant digits between two successive equations and the uh, and in the right hand side we, we have number a common number of Significant digits of exact and approximate solution. 
so it can show. And we won't have a problem. Also for the CS tech method, I, I should describe it all. Because, because we start applying Google software, we apply the kernel library, and, and all the process um, will be done by, by using uh, the kernel library automatically. We don't need to find the number of commands to be digits or other things uh, one by one, yeah, step by step, for, for example, for different values. All the process will be uh, automatically. Um, yeah, it's useful. Okay, thank you, colleagues. Other questions, please? Well, if uh, there are no questions, so uh, thank you very much for your talk. My pleasure. Okay, thank you. And the next talk uh, will start at uh, 17.45. Well, we have 25 minutes. Well, I think maybe we should wait for it. <laughs> oh, Maxim, I, I, I have one proposal. Maybe we can organize some kind of um, group picture. If any participants who has a camera can switch on, then we can, the cameras, then we can organize a group picture of our conference. Uh, I, I see the picture by Denis Sidorov. Very nice photo. Okay, it's okay. It's so, Jim, so it's you have, how are you? Oh, what you Fine. Professor Vasyan. So, colleagues, uh, if you want, you can switch on the camera. Oh, Denis, you can switch on Света, добрый вечер. Рады вас видеть. Профессор Камиль Айдазаде, здравствуйте. Вот уже, видите, какая хорошая компания. Света, спасибо, что приехали. Для меня это большое спасибо вам за приглашение. И все были рады повидать Годунова Сергея Константиновича. Большой привет ему от нашей конференции. Обязательно. Он с большим удовольствием посмотрел на доклад Игоря. Так, ну вот, Максим Александрович, если есть еще другие галереи, вот все, кто включил камеры, сейчас на экране, да? Uh, да. Oh, yes, Thank you for your interesting talk. I have a lot of questions, but I will write to you. Very interesting. So, uh, uh, in Russian tradition, usually we say, один, два, три, one, two, three. When I say three, please smile or say cheese or, or something. <laughs> yes. Максим Александрович, вы как будете фотографировать? Я тоже подправлю, а то я в бок смотрю. Как? Скриншот, да? Да, скриншот. Скрин-скрин? Да. Окей. Please be ready. Uh, uh, one, two, three. Yes. Uh, so this is the first picture. Thank you very much for your participation. Ronnie Ravlau, Best wishes to you and happy talk. Thank you for coming. But uh, many people uh, um, wants, want to listen to your talk. Therefore, we should start in time. Yes. We should wait. Of course, Sorry. no problem. OK, thank you. So the microphone is open. If you want to say something to participants, you are welcome, both in Russian in English, in China, we will try to understand. Thank you. So we have uh, two talks on today. Uh, 